The New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Foundation promotes, preserves, and perpetuates music, culture, and heritage through programs, cultural, educational, and economic activities year-round. Learn more at jazzandheritage.org. A Steppin' Out Special, it's Carnival Time. I'm Peggy Scott Laborde, and welcome to Steppin' Out, it's Carnival Time. I am delighted to say that for 37 years for this special edition, I've had as my guests Arthur Hardy, publisher of Arthur Hardy's Mardi Gras Guide, now in its 47th annual edition. Congratulations, Thanks, Arthur. Thank you. <laughs> Arthur also covers, of course, Carnival for Fox 8 News and the Times-Picayune, the New Orleans Advocate. Welcome again. Thanks. And Errol Laborde, executive editor for Renaissance Publishing and the author of Mardi Gras Chronicles of the New Orleans Carnival. Both are authors, of course, of numerous Carnival history books. But first up, let us look back. E, how was last year? It was good. It was good, especially because it, it happened. Right? Yeah, that's uh, right. Uh, last year, I, I equate to the, uh, the 1980 Mardi Gras. And the resemblance is this, is that the year in both years, the year before, there weren't any parades. In 1979, uh, the parades were canceled because of the police strike. And so in 1980, when it came back, people were joyous. They were just glad to see, and they realized how much they missed Mardi Gras. And of course, uh, last year, the year before, it was canceled, parades were canceled because of um, because of COVID, and people were just ready to see that too. Now there's some differences too. I mean, I mean, you know, back then in '79, it was a, a police matter, and it was uh, it was the mayor versus the police department. But the 1980 Mardi Gras ended, uh, and I remember being at Gallia Hall and seeing. The mayor and the, and, and the police saluting each other, and that was a good moment. There was nobody saluting COVID, okay, uh, at the end of last year, uh, but at least it came back, and I think that there was uh, good feeling for coming back, even though we saw the origin of a new problem, which we'll talk uh, more about. That the overall labor shortage, not just in police but across the country, uh, was a factor in Mardi Gras. Well, Rex year. had a big anniversary too, didn't well, it? Well, that was the other thing that happened is that. Uh, it was Rex's 150th anniversary, uh, and they did a, a parade to that theme, a very nice parade, and there were some nice um, displays in, in, uh, in uh, museum exhibits. Yeah. So if anybody really wanted to study Carnival, and if you want to study Carnival, 1872 is a key year to look at because that was the year that, that Rex started. It was also this transitional year between uh, Reconstruction and trying to rebuild the city. And so it was, it was a very good year for learning about Mardi Gras. Right. And Rex, the exhibit actually was extended at the Presbyterian, and there was also a book, wasn't there, Arthur, by Dr. Stephen Hales, which yep. you happened to publish. Huh? They did a book, and so did Momus for the 150th. A right. couple of things I remember from last year. I think it's the first time ever we had 12 consecutive days of no bad weather. I mean, a few raindrops and one or two parades, and I mean a few, but it was the best consecutive weather we've ever had. And then the other thing I remember, and it's two things, it wasn't until November 8th that the mayor said, yeah, we're going to have Mardi Gras, pretty late. And we didn't have parade routes published until December 21st, uh -huh. and they were shortened parade routes, of course. Uh -huh. So it was not without some bumps, but Errol, you're so right. that that, uh, And I, I kind of equated to, to not just 1980, but um, 06 after Katrina, you know, that, that we... Mm -hmm. We didn't know if we could do Mardi Gras, and we said, yes, we can. So a pivotal year, and it was a great one. Yeah, and Arthur, what's new this year? Well, the, the, so many things, of course. Uh, police were unable to, to decide if they had enough manpower to do uh, complete parade routes, as everybody hoped, until it seemed like forever. Uh, we've got new parades, the Legion of Mars, which has been parading with the crews of Ferret and Allah for years, now has its own parade permit. This is a military parade that will honor military veterans and first responders, uh, very philanthropic in its nature. And they're going to be on the first uh, Saturday of the parade season, February 11th, six uptown parades that day and three parades in other areas. So it's the biggest day of the whole carnival season in terms of parades. Uh, in Slidell, we've got a new crew of Athenium. And Metairie now has a parade on Lundegram. Centurions has moved to then. 
and I think some people are going to just spend the night, get ready for August. The next day, it's 50th anniversary <laughs> parade. But they moved the parade up to noon, and that's that's new. And speaking of movement, Rex, instead of starting at 10 o'clock, will start at 11 this year. So there's a, a lot of movement this year, but all of it, I think, designed to make Mardi Gras uh, bigger and better. Yeah. Well, um, Air, this year um, we kind of uh, saw the challenges of trying to get either a monarch or a parade marshal. And, I think there's still some confusion even what the, that means. Yeah, let's distinguish that because a lot of people are confused about that, especially in the, the, the media. Uh, there's, a lot. there's a difference between a grand marshal and a king and, and a monarch. Uh, a grand marshal is somebody you pretty much just stick in there. Uh, usually they ride on a float, but they're not the center of the float like a king is. Sometimes they're in a convertible. Uh, sometimes they'll be a musician that's playing at the ball or something, or sometimes they'll be a miscellaneous uh, a celebrity. But it's not the same type of presence that a king has. And so when we had the, uh, the controversy with Mel Gibson, uh, some people may have been thinking of Mel Gibson as being like a king in Endymion. Uh, he wasn't. Okay, Endymion selects his own king. It's, uh, it's a member. He wouldn't have been up on the throne, up on the float. Uh, he would have been in a lesser position. But still, you know, Cruz has been bringing in grand marshals and people like to see him. But it's not the same sort of status. And they, I don't know if they usually print the balloons for them and cups and that kind of thing. Uh, and so th they just need to understand that. And it's not unheard of to have someone announced as being the grand marshal and then have to cancel. On the other hand, if, uh, if someone's announced as being a king or a Bacchus, you better, you, know, you better well show up. But the bigger question is, how important is this celebrity thing at all right now? One thing we learned with the Mel Gibson thing is how politically sensitive it is. In the case of Bacchus, uh, we're seeing Every year it takes a long time before Bacchus is, is announced. And to me, at least, it's not like the big Danny Kaye, Bob Hope type of stories that you used to have. Does Bacchus really need a celebrity king? I mean, Bacchus has become a celebrity now. Bacchus is, is the big name. Bacchus is a bigger name most often than, uh, than the person is king. And so to me, that could be something that they just don't need. Mm -hmm. Now, also this year, though, there are some anniversaries, aren't there? Some. <laughs> <laughs> a third of the Mardi Gras got this year deals with, <laughs> with anniversaries. Uh, to me, the, the, the big one is Toth, uh, 75th anniversary. That club, under its present leadership, has gone from 135 members when he took over 35 years ago to, to 2,200 members now. Oh, I mean, it's, it's just it's amazing. And, uh, of course, there's been so much effort to get them back on their parade route because they're the crew of shut-ins. You know, they design their route around uh, institutions where people can't get out to see a parade, so Toth brings it to them. Uh, they're not the only parade of significance. Well, all the parades are significant, but uh, a big one is Argus and Metairie. I mean, they brought Fat Tuesday to Fat City 50 years ago, and it's a, it's a big parade. It's followed by two truck parades. We mentioned it's starting at, at noon this year. And they've had some wonderful celebrities through the years, including Barbara Eden, their first empress, <laughs> who was just, everybody I've talked to said she was so classy and so, so lovely to everybody. I dream of Jeannie. That's it. <laughs> Phyllis Dillon, Loretta Swit, Sherry Lewis, Connie Stevens had a ton of really big celebrities. I, but, I remember when August started, like Bacchus had started a few years before that, yeah. and Bacchus was a rage. Yeah. And so everyone who was starting said, we're going to have a parade like Bacchus. Yeah. You know? with a big celebrity, and people were anticipating who the first August would be. Do you remember who it was? Well, George Ackle, yeah, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> Councilman George Ackle from Harriam. The rumor had been it would be Robert Redford, okay? <laughs> Not quite. And, That's you know, right. Robert That's Redford, George Ackle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but eventually they went with empresses, and then after about 10 years said, no, we're going to have a local queen, and they, and they still do that. But some other crews are having anniversaries. The ball crews of uh, Cayman, the military crew, 50. Uh, Janus, which some people say Janus, but it ain't. It's Janus, Janus. 75 years. Uh, Cleopatra, which is now the fifth largest organization, 2,200 women, 50 years. Uh, Isis and Kenner, 50. August, we mentioned. Little Rascals, 40. Orpheus, 30. Uh, Druids, 25. And Celine in Slidell is uh, also 25. And the crew of Louisianans in Washington, D.C. Oh, yeah. 75 years, and there's a wonderful exhibit at the Baton Rouge Capital Museum, Capital Park Museum, uh, that's in just a terrific exhibit that traces the history from the beginning to last year. Wow. Yes. And, you, and you know, some of those crews are just a ball. And yeah. so the ones that are just a ball, that people aren't as familiar with them because they're more of just private events. When you have a parade, that puts your new name up. But in their world, 
uh, they're very important. Like the people in the West Bank, Janus is a very important event. How do you and, know? They found in, 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 in the people in the military, you know, they're both. And, and so, yeah, the, they're important in their own way. And people say, why don't they parade? Because they don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is our thing. We do it, and we have fun. And the longevity of some of these crews, uh, of course, we've got society ball crews that date back to the 1880s, so it's not surprising. And plus, we don't need 20 new parades. So. No, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, E, we know that this is, you know, sort of an ongoing issue, but the concern for police security is, is going to be one. Huh? This, I think, is the biggest issue that Carnival is, is, is facing. And I don't see any resolution to it in the, uh, in the near future because, again, it's, it's a nationwide problem in terms of, of, of manpower shortage, but it's even worse with, uh, with police shortage. We see police forces having a hard time finding people, including the New Orleans police force. In New Orleans, they have the money. You know, someone wants to be a cop if they can qualify. You know, the money is waiting for them. But even with the money, uh, they're having a hard time getting them. I think a lot of people. And it's an issue that Carnival is going to have to face. Uh, and it's not like, well, why don't we get the National Guard and put them out, you know? I think, uh, I know John Bell Edwards was very sensitive about how we use the National Guard. You know, they're not, you know, uh, they're not street guards. I mean, uh, they have other things to do. And so I'm not sure what the answer is. Uh, but maybe the answer is going to be a little bit of a bad answer and have to shorten the parade routes. And, of course, toads come to mind, everybody. I mean, uh, if it has to happen, you wish there'd be a, a toad exception. There are some parades... Their route being shortened, it's not that big of a deal. But there are others that's really important because they go through neighborhoods, they have uh, uh, a long history. I remember a long time ago when I was a kid, it used to be, I used to see these guys, the auxiliary police. Yeah. And they used to be, they used to have like New Orleans police uniforms. And the only difference is a big patch that said auxiliary police. And uh, I don't know what happened to them, but maybe we, you know, maybe we need them back for, uh, for Carnival. And it's a problem that's going to be ongoing. I mean, yeah. 500 policemen aren't going to fall out of the sky for next year. So whatever happens now, is that the model for the future? Uh, there, there are more questions than answers. I did forget one thing about what's new. A new economic impact study mm. is going to be done this year by Dr. Tony Weiss at Tulane University. Uh, it's been nine years since we've had one. And it's so important to measure, if, if you can measure, how, how financially uh, important the celebration is to our economy. So looking forward to see that. They, they hope they have it finished uh, by next uh, January 6th, by 12th night. Mm -hmm. and, you know, just getting back to this, this police power shortage, maybe there's always been a limit to the number of crew, parading crews you can have. But usually councils don't find don't follow them very easily. Mm -hmm. You know, usually, oh, we'll make an exception if someone, you know, if someone's in someone's council district and wants to start a, a, a crew. But maybe lawmakers have to be more diligent about that and really just stay where we are with the number of parades or even, you know, not let new ones start and keep the numbers down because that contributes to the problem uh, until, we can, and until we can deal with the problem. And we're seeing two crews that can't get a permit join other crews. The uh, Mr. Gordo of Phoenix joined Sparta last year. Uh, there's a crew called Harmonia that's part of Pygmalion. Femus, a female crew, rides with Ferret. So we're seeing crews kind of piggyback or, or meld in with existing crews. Yeah. Which some, is better than adding three parades, certainly. Yeah, and some of those were spin off from Knicks, people who rode in Knicks and, yes, they and, are. and started a new crew. But that might be the better idea, uh, you know, to see how this works, uh, to look at this thing as, uh, with, uh, with Sparta and, and, and see how, how that works out of, of letting another crew in. Because then you can still have your parade, you still have your same parade route, you can allow more people to parade, you probably have more floats, but it might be better than having another whole new parade. Well, one of my favorite things, believe it or not, we're already here to our lists. And let us take a leisurely uh, stroll through our list. You, you up first, Arthur. Well, uh, trends in Mardi Gras, throws. Everybody's trying to come up with a new signature throw. You know, of course, with the Zulu coconut, the Rockstar balloon, the Muse's shoe. So uh, good luck in coming up with something unique. But every crew's trying to do that while dealing with the rising cost of throws and delivery issues from China. Uh, I know some of the plants shut down over there because of COVID, so that's an issue. Also, there's still an attempt to try to do, make it more green. Absolutely. It? But it's still and, too expensive in some Yeah, and, and that's happening at, at, at a much greater pace than I predicted it would. Uh, also popular are these cutout doubloons, which I don't really think are doubloons, but doubloon collectors say they are. It, doubloons in the shape of uh, various objects. It could be an anchor, it could be a flower. That's uh, been a big hit. 
And uh, on the negative side, we still have a problem with throwbacks, people throwing things at the boat riders. Very, very dangerous, against the law, and, and just stupid. Uh, number two on trends is mission statements. The last five or six crews that have formed, whether they parade or not, all come out with mission statements that talk about inclusiveness and community support and, and diversity, and I'm certainly for all these things. But, you know, I can't imagine, like when Endymion was formed in 1967, the Gentilly Carnival Club, that they had a mission statement that talked about any of those things. You know, Mardi Gras parades are formed to have fun and, and spread joy, and it's, it's nice that they're doing these things, but, but uh, that's not the purpose of a Mardi Gras parade, uh, in, in my mind. But the outcome of that, though, is greater philanthropy. Yeah, it's about fun, but look at the crews that are doing so much. And many, many crews do things. The ones we hear about the most, of course, are Rex. Gave out almost $2 million to charter schools this year. Um, Hermes has something called Beyond the Parade, very active in supporting police. Uh, Muses has been doing things for years, and, and it's, it's good to see. Uh, last on my list is the unfair treatment of the alternative crews, the preseason parades, of which there are about six now. Uh, we talk about the importance of diversity in Mardi Gras, and these crews are the most diverse. They give everybody a chance to participate, very artsy, and yet they don't get their parade permits until about a couple of weeks before their parade, and there's a disclaimer on their permit that the, their routes could be changed the day of the parade. Mm. And I just think they deserve more respect. They bring so much to the table. The, the media loves them. The crowds are enormous, but they're treated like stepchildren. And I think maybe they need a seat at the Mardi Gras Advisory Council. Um, it, it, I just think they're they're not being treated with the well, respect. Arthur, a big change, uh, coup d'illusion, which used to follow behind a coup de vue, has been given this whole other night. Yes, yeah, Sunday night, which is a school night, yeah. and a lot of their, their members are teachers. Yeah. And uh, they were told for safety reasons. I don't understand how a parade following another is less safe than two separate parades and two mm -hmm. separate nights. And that Sunday's kind of belonged to Petite Rex, so now we've got mm -hmm. two parades, I don't know if you want to say competing on the same day, but anyway, they need more attention than they've been given, in my opinion, and, and I hope we see some changes. But that Sunday night, school night thing doesn't hurt Bacchus at all. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, but you know. delusion ain't yeah. Bacchus. No, well, this is a much smaller parade. Yeah, I mean, yeah but I mean, you're right. You're not going to be up as late watching delusion uh, as you would with Bacchus, so to me that's really kind of a non-issue, but I, yeah, I know no, they say it, that. It's a big issue to them. It's it, a big it, issue to them. Yeah, I, know, it really, I know it is. It really is, and uh, it worked perfectly on the back of, of Crew de vous, you know, two parades in the yeah, same night. Thought it did, but uh, yeah. hopefully things will get better. I just think they deserve more. Yeah. Errol, your list. Well, Arthur, many years ago, I read a book called The Decline of Pleasure. And in it, the guy made the, uh, made the argument that people can't enjoy any things anymore without f feeling a need to justify it. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And, and, and it's, that's the kind of purpose. And if I tell people that, that sounds kind of cruel hearted, but you know, yeah, well, why can't you have a parade? just to be parading. Mm -hmm. uh, even at that, it's doing some civic good. Mm -hmm. I mean, in terms of getting neighborhoods together and bringing out. And so uh, everyone shouldn't necessarily feel, I mean, if you want to raise money, that's fine. But, but it's okay to have fun, too, just to be having fun. And, yes, it is. and, and in its own way, it does something. I have uh, five things. I did it in ascending orders, this whole thing about flinging throws back at float riders. Mm -hmm. And I've seen the kind of people who do it. It's going to be along a parade route, and some guy's walking by. It's going to always be a guy, OK? And, you know, people throw these beads in big packages now. So all of a sudden he gets a big package of beads and he just stops and impulsively throws it back. And that's a lethal weapon right there. And you see that happening a lot. And they shouldn't do it. And I've told people, don't do that. You know, let, let they listen to me. Uh, but, yeah, they shouldn't do that. You can really hurt somebody and catch, and catch those masks off guard. Um, number four I have is riders not masking. Mm. Mm -hmm. This is not as much a parade the, the issue in, in, in Orleans because... Uh, they enforce the laws a little bit better, um, but yeah, in, in, in outlying areas, the whole thing, the whole tradition of, and it just looks sloppy um, when people aren't masking. And even in the Orleans parade, I see that somebody takes their mask off for a while, and it, it, it just loses some of its, uh, its magic when you do that. The big parades like Bacchus and Endymion, once they get into their convention hall, they can take it off True. because the law says when you're on the streets, but keep the mask on. Uh, number three, unfair no parking areas. And uh, I, I see this in downtown New Orleans. For example, the areas around Garrier Hall where you have those, all of those court uh, buildings, and there's a lot of no parking law enforcement vehicle. Well, those are vehicles that are used during a trial in the afternoon. I mean, it's not like police cars just waiting. And there are a lot of spaces that are taken up for that. 
And what if you have a church or a school that's obviously not having any kind of service, you know, at 9 o'clock on a Saturday night or something like that? Why not allow more parking places? And just a lot of places, they could be parking places. And people, you know, they're really safety conscious now. And, and, and so they, they could be safe from... Um, number two uh -huh. is um, commercialism in, in parades. Again, Arlene's enforces this better to his credit. Uh, some places don't. Uh, even in Jefferson Parish, some of the parades are, uh, have commercialism. And, and the further you go, the more you have. And again, it just looks bad. And what worries me is that now that we have these parades at Halloween and at Christmas, they look like Mardi Gras, but they're really not Mardi Gras parades. And they don't come under the jurisdiction of the ordinance, but they have commercialism. And so one day somebody is going to say, well, look, why do you let these people have commercialism and we can't have it? And so I think that's a, a danger. And the number one, number one uh, thing that gets me mad, and it really does get me mad, is predatory ticket writers. These are people who, during a parade, uh, they work for whatever city office it is. They go around. They know where to spot people. A favorite one is if you park too close to the curb. Uh, I mean, you know, they're precise. They're very precise at that. And they just write a lot of tickets. And what that does, it just ruins, even though those cars really aren't creating any, any kind of a danger. Obviously, if you're blocking a driveway or something, but they're not creating a, a real danger. They discourage people from coming to the parades in the long run. They heard Carnival. All right. Two good lists. Very <laughs> strong. And before we are about to almost say goodbye, if you will, we want to remind you that once again this year, WYS is the place to catch more than a dozen documentaries and specials about carnival history. On Saturday, and that's February the 11th, we will present a marathon of eight, count them, eight hours of Mardi Gras programming, and that begins at 3 p.m. That also includes a new program, and that's the Crew of Janus, 75 Years of Carnival. It celebrates the history of this crew, which has roots on the West Bank, as we mentioned, and has staged carnival balls since 1948. Past monarchs and captains are interviewed, along with Errol, Arthur, and me. <laughs> and it airs at 8 p.m. on February the 11th. For the full carnival program schedule, you can visit wyes.org, our great old website there. And another show, of course, debuts on WYES this Mardi Gras season. It is called Big Chief Blackhawk, and it features the youngest Mardi Gras Indian, Big Chief, Big Chief T, or Terrence Williams Jr., of the Blackhawk Hunters. In the film, he and members of his tribe talk about the social and environmental issues facing the Indian culture and their work to keep the tradition alive. Produced by Jonathan Isaac Jackson. You can see that documentary on Saturday, February 18th at 9 p.m. And on Mardi Gras Day at 5 p.m. right here on WYS. Just a reminder that WYS will once again present the 2023 Rex Ball and the meeting of the courts of Rex and the Mystic Crew of Comus. Mardi Gras night, February 21st. We'll actually sign on once again at 7 p.m. It will be shown on WYS, streamed on WYS.org, WYS and PBS apps, all kinds of ways, <laughs> and on WYS's YouTube channel. And of course, earlier that day, we'll be showing you lots of carnival-related programs. And uh, once again, go to WYS.org slash Mardi Gras for all the details. And now, though, we will leave you with rare footage of the 1973 Toth Parade. 50 years ago, we view it as it passes Gallagher Hall. The theme, Man's Quest for Knowledge. And you will hear, I love the golden tones, the anthem of carnival, If Ever I Cease to Love, as sung by Edmond Doc Sushan. Check out uh, the Mardi Gras Guide, by the way, because there's a special story on Doc Sushan and Johnny Wiggs and his New Orleans Kings. Um, Errol and Arthur, final words before we go? Biggest Mardi Gras ever, more parades than ever, more riders than ever, membership is up. It ought to be a great one. Mm -hmm. Just appreciate how much good Carnival does. I always think one of the great urban moments is when people, when you got a million people out on a median, street median together celebrating. A few cities can catch it up. Even a city with our reputation for danger, 
we have one of the great moments in terms of just crowd safety and joy. Yes, and a final actual P.S. Arthur, I uh, love your story also in Gerard, the photographer, Gerard Mouton. A dear Wonderful. friend, an excellent photographer, hasn't gotten the amount of credit he deserves. He's a scholar, really, doing a lot of research on yes. photography in New Orleans, and he shared some of his best photos with us in this year's Mardi Gras Guide. All right, well, thank you all, both gentlemen. Thank you. And thank you so much for watching. Happy Mardi Gras. The New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Foundation promotes, preserves, and perpetuates music, culture, and heritage through programs, cultural, educational, and economic activities year-round. Learn more at jazzandheritage.org.